can't go back empty-handed. Dare look down on me. Travis is conceptually such a fun character. I love the idea of playable bandits and thugs and highwaymen and video games. He's his theming of fire and theft coupled with tankiness and damage and displacement sounds amazing, but his kit can definitely leave something to be desired. I'll be going over all his abilities individually first, so if you want a quicker summary or just want to skip to the discussion about what I would change about Travis, uh, there should be timestamps in the description. This will mostly be from my experience of playing Travis on the normal difficulties at level 50 in New Game Plus. Abilities, backwards toss. Throws a target one square behind Travis, dealing damage. First of all, I want to say that I love how this game shows you the strength of Travis's backwards toss literally in the first battle of the game. You have a narrow bridge that's only three squares wide, which encourages you to form a defensive formation so that the enemies can't get behind you. But then Big Dog Travis walks up, suplexes the shit out of one of your characters, completely destroying that formation. Then Trish, with her high speed, take pot shots at that character. And of course, Travis is now directly behind them because he just suplexed you, and he will now do the follow up attacks. But let's get to the list. So, deals very respectable single target damage. It can move enemies towards your allies, with Travis in a perfect position for follow up attacks. It can move enemies away from your allies, putting Travis in between them to block the enemy's path. It can displace enemy formation, creating or closing openings. It can target enemies with a two height difference from Travis, allowing him to pull targets off elevated ground. It can toss enemies into terrain effects such as a blazed molten iron, spikes or puddles. It can aid in setting up air of effect attacks for your allies. It can back critical. It also has a talent upgrade that reduces its TP cost by 1, um, which will make the total cost of it 1, which an ability with damage this good and a displacement effect for 1 TP is incredibly high value. So if a wall or a character or an object or a height greater than 3 is behind Travis, he'll just drop the enemies in front of him, the same spot that he picked them up at instead of behind. Also, this move cannot initiate follow-up attacks. Mug deals damage to a single target and has a chance of stealing an item. So it seems to be about 15 to 30% chance to steal an item from my experience. If the target isn't holding an accessory, it'll steal a random consumable like a recovery item or a buffing, debuffing spice or one of the offensive magic stones. I've never been able to steal more than one item per enemy from experience and it'll come up with something like there's nothing left to steal or something along those lines. It um, does deal more damage than a standard attack which can make the difference between finishing off an opponent or not. It can back critical and it can trigger follow up attacks. It has got a talent upgrade that increases its damage dealt which was somewhere between 20-15%. I had 13% for my testing which brings its damage closer to backwards toss, but it's still a little bit less. Impeding Strike deals damage to three horizontal squares in front of Travis and delays the target's turns. This will deal a bit less damage than Travis's standard attack, however, you can also obviously hit up to three targets with it. It can target units diagonal from Travis that he may not be able to reach regularly. It can back critical enemies and it can also trigger follow-up attacks. So the delay effect pushes the target's turn order back significantly depending on the current turn order and the speed of the target. This delay allows, or potentially allows, allies to act before enemies who normally wouldn't, which can change the flow of battle quite a lot. So the more allies you have on the map, the bigger difference this delay can make because the larger chance there is of having one of those allies potentially act before this enemy you've delayed. This can also help allies who have a high speed value act twice before that enemy can even act once. 
So this is a very high value move for 2TP given the damage and the delay effect on potentially three targets. Heavy Smash. Travis charges for a turn, then deals large air of effect damage to all enemies within two squares. This is one of the heaviest hitting physical attacks in the game. It can target up to 12 squares total, potentially hitting a very large number of enemies. It can back critical. The waiting can be bypassed with in tandem or the now ability. After the attack triggers, Travis's turn ends immediately, meaning that he will be unable to act or reposition for effectively two turns. This coupled with him being surrounded by enemies due to the nature of, of the attack, Travis will likely require support through healing or defensive abilities like shield or rampart or above and beyond. The charge will be cancelled if repositioned with abilities like catapult, light wave or knockback, and with a large TP cost at 4 with a moderate potential for not reaching its value makes it a very risky move without a controlled environment and good setup. Passives on your guard reduces damage taken by 25% if no allies are within two squares of Travis. This allows Travis to be much more durable when breaking away from the main group encouraging that type of playstyle. Travis can maintain on your ground and still do follow up attacks when combined with spear units, archers and range physical attacks like energy wave, ball toss and cleave. This will stack very well with defensive accessories as well. Steal back. Halves damage taken from behind. This allows Travis to put himself in more vulnerable positions. He will take less damage from the back than the front. And the same as any other unit, enemies will prioritize targeting his back, letting Travis not only bait them into hitting him from behind at reduced effect, but also acts as a pseudo taunt as enemies will often ignore your other units in order to land that back attack on Travis. As far as I'm aware, abilities that cannot back critical, like magic spells, will bypass the effects of steel back. Further testing may be required. Fortuitous follow-up. Follow-up attacks have a chance of stealing items. It's a similar percentage and item pool to his mug ability from my experience. Uh, Travis's kit allows good positioning for follow-up attacks, so this will trigger quite often and quite naturally. Trial by Fire increases damage while standing on a blazed terrain. As far as I could tell, this only increased his damage output by about 5%. It looks like it may just increase his strength by about 3 or something, but unfortunately it doesn't seem like it's worth the setup, but it could still be used in opportune situations. Notable Talents Backwards Toss TP-1 this brings Backward Toss's TP cost to 1. Backwards Toss provides great damage and utility with its displacement effects. Having this ability cost 1 TP is incredibly strong. This one will share a slot with Mug Damage Up, which increases the damage that the Mug ability deals. You cannot use both of these talents at the same time. Having both of those abilities cost 1 TP is much stronger than Mug doing more damage in my opinion, making the Backwards Toss minus 1 TP my recommended choice. Fire Resistance 2 reduces fire damage taken by 50%. Coupled with Travis's inherent tankiness with the HP pool on your guard and his decent magic defenses, fire spells will become vastly reduced. This is particularly good against certain bosses and on certain maps. This can be combined with other fire accessories to further increase this resistance or can be combined with other elemental resistance accessories in order to cover all of the enemy spells that the mages have on that particular map and this does synergize with his trial by fire passive as well. Accessories Travis benefits mostly from accessories that make him more survivable his kit encourages him to position a little further away from the main squad. This may get him out of range of a good heal when positioning aggressively. 
this can make healing accessories like Bangle of Vitality or Red Scarf particularly good. Speed Bracelet also synergizes well with Impeding Strike as Travis can occasionally act twice before his opponent can act once. Rearguard's Cloak also stacks with Steelback which can be useful for defending choke points like Flanagan or Eridor. I much prefer playing him offensively though as his kit promotes it. I find Endurance Earrings coupled with Bangle of Vitality or Red Scarf works best for me. I'll have a list of some recommended accessories displayed on screen and I will also have the next few categories key points displayed on screen. Okay, so the summary. Offense. Standard attacks have high base damage. His mug has increased single target damage. His backward toss has high single target burst damage. His delay strike, delay strike, impeding strike has moderate air of effect damage and can trigger follow up attacks. His heavy smash has very high air of effect damage in a large area around him requiring charge. Trial by Fire is a minor buff to all damage while on a blaze terrain. He has no ranged attack options apart from using Heavy Smash to target all squares two squares away or use Impeding Strike to target a square diagonal from him. Defense. His base hit points are very high. On Your Guard reduces damage taken by 25% when Travis is not near an ally. Steel back reduces damage taken from behind by 50%. Fire resistance 2 reduces fire damage taken by 50%. His base defensive stats are above average, that being physical defense and magical defense. Characters with comparable durability have exceptionally low magic defense, and Travis does not suffer from this. Mobility can move 5 squares by default, most characters can either move 5 or 4 squares. He can jump at a two, minus 2 plus 2 height. This is standard for most characters, so he has no notable mobility options. Very basic standard stuff. Utility. Impeding Strike will delay up to 3 targets turns, potentially letting yourself or allies act before them. Backwards Toss will displace a single enemy moving them into a disadvantageous position. Mug and fortuitous follow-up can steal accessories and consumables. Steal back can allow you to draw aggro away from your team depending on how the AI wants to act. TP management. Standard attack options are strong, meaning Travis does not need to spend TP in order to deal damage. He has got two one TP cost abilities, meaning Travis will always be able to either backwards toss or mug. He has no way to gain TP apart from the standard 1 TP gain each turn. His heavy smash is a 4 TP cost ability, so Travis may have a hard time gaining enough TP without withholding ability usage or using a supporting character to grant him a TP bonus in order to use this ability. Okay, now here are some ideas I have of changes that I would love to see on Travis. Now obviously I wouldn't want to see all of these things because then his kit would be overloaded but some of these things I think would add a lot more dynamic to his kit because he is a very straightforward character. So we'll start with Mug which is an ability that just deals a bit more than your standard attack and has a chance of stealing at 1 TP cost. This doesn't add a massive amount of value so some ideas for changes I have for this one would be Mug having a base chance at inflicting fury for two turns at a 90% rate in order to be in line with Flanagan's shield bash. Another more interesting way to do this fury effect on Mug is to have it be a 100% chance at inflicting fury for two or three turns when an item is stolen either by mug or fortuitous follow-up this obviously kind of synergizes with the idea of the, the character getting pissed off when you steal their item i think this would be a very interesting way to do it may not be as reliable or spammable as the other way i proposed but this would definitely be a very fun way 
Another thing you could do with mug and fortuitous fortuitous follow-up is to add a TP stealing effect. So whenever you successfully steal an item from the opponent, it will also steal alongside that item at one TP. Uh, and then grant it to Travis. So this will be like a form of TP game that you can get from follow-up attacks with fortuitous follow-up or actively get with the mug ability. Now, I don't think tying these stealing effects to fury or TP is necessarily unbalanced because the percentages tend to be around 15 to 30%, so they're not high percentages. And on top of that, you can't steal multiple items from a single target. So this will, these will be like a nice addition that will definitely not tip him over in any kind of way. This obviously also promotes stealing items that will not only benefit you from the item stolen, but also give you an immediate benefit, as well as the benefit of now having that item. The immediate combat benefit to encourage you to use these abilities proactively. Another change that might be nice is just having Fortuitous follow-up deal increased damage the same way um, Serenoa's Pursuit Stance or Groma's follow-up attack plus talent I think it is. This would just be a um, just a nice bonus to have because he does feel like a follow-up kind of attack attack character. I would probably have it not do as much as Serenoa's. It would have to be like kind of in between a standard follow-up attack damage and Serenoa's pursuit stance attack damage. Now onto backwards toss. I think this is something that everybody tried when they got their hands on backwards toss is to be able to throw targets off ledges and cause fall damage. This obviously would be amazing it would keep it more in line with the push abilities and actually some of the next thing I'll also mention is also more in line with the push abilities which is backwards toss being able to trigger follow-up attacks so if you have an ally two squares behind you and you throw an enemy behind you you've now sandwiched them that should trigger a follow-up attack another fun one that would kind of keep it in line with push as well is if you had a wall or an enemy directly behind you then the enemy in front of you that you backwards toss will be thrown into the wall or into the enemy behind you causing that collision damage and then kind of bouncing back um, into their original position in front of Travis instead of Travis just twirling them around and dropping them back in the same spot have him kind of throw them behind him and then bounce back into that spot dealing that collision extra collision damage you could also give this kind of like a unique animation perhaps instead of the twirling around and throwing maybe Travis can grab them by the legs and just slam them into whatever's behind him and then slam them back forward again into the forward spot I think that something like that would be just amazing now trial by fire this is something that just needs to be changed its values just it, it doesn't grant enough benefits forever deliberately going out of your way to do this unless it's just extremely convenient to do so so for trial by fire maybe just uh, increase his strength and speed by 10% or 15% whenever he's on a blazed terrain or another one may be like Corentin's What's that one called? Whenever Travis starts his turn on a blaze terrain, for him to be granted an extra TP on that turn, the same way the Ice Mage, when he is standing on the ice terrain, is granted an extra TP when he starts his turn on ice. I think that would also work very well. I, I don't know about doing them both at the same time. You'd probably either have the speed and strength bonus or you'd have the TP bonus. I think that the speed and strength bonus fit his kit better than the TP bonus, but both could be fun. Now, Heavy Smash. Heavy Smash is one that, without setting it up correctly, is very risky it costs a lot of tp it may not hit enough units you may be killed during the charge you may be knocked out of it 
you will lose the 4 TP and when it lands often you're only hitting units like shield units or sword units that it won't it, it'll never one shot these guys so there's a good chance that they'll all be standing still after it and when they're all standing and Travis is there with his entire turn missed they're just gonna gang up on him and without proper support Travis has a very good chance of ending up dead R regardless we're talking about some changes now one that I think would be really cool especially with the changed trial by fire is that make heavy smash create a blaze terrain under Travis and in all of the attacks area of effect this will effectively cause extra damage to all of the enemy units in that area and when their turn start they'll also take a tick of fire damage they'll also take fire damage while trying to move away from Travis or to get closer in on Travis and obviously this will give Travis that strength and speed bonus so after Travis finishes the charge attack execution his following turn will come quicker so he won't have to wait an entire turn because he's on fire with that speed bonus and it'll obviously synergize with that high fire resistance that he has as well thematically I think this one fits really well it keeps the charge effect in but just has a higher impact it has the kind of impact where even if you only hit two enemies the ablaze terrain can have a, a lingering effect on how the rest of the map is played that turn so I, I really like this one another more consistent reliable change would be having heavy smash no longer require charge time obviously you'd have to lower the damage a bit to compensate for this and I think that adding a movement down debuff to any enemy hit in the air of effect similar to Avlora's no escape ability would also be really cool this way Travis could kind of run into a backline against healers and mages or archers and just heavy smash them all for high burst damage reducing their movement speed so they can't get away from him the following turn this one sounds really cool to me and would be pretty consistent I, I, I honestly don't know which one I like better I think the one with the movement down debuff will um, be a lot more consistent so there it might be it might be more fun because of that because you could do it a lot more reliably while the other one kind of fits him a bit more thematically I think now delay strike I think is perfectly fine as it is I wouldn't touch it and I think potentially adding a counter attack ability um, could also work on a character like Travis obviously you could have some of these changes done through weapon talents some may be optional like oh you can pick you know have it be one of the talents where oh you can pick this one or this one or you could just have some of these things added into the base kit whatever whatever works some of this stuff would just be really fun and added to his kit and add a lot more to his kit a lot more flexibility a lot more dynamic play uh, a lot more things to work towards because right now Travis tends to run up and backwards toss and follow up attack the shit out of people or he will just run up and delay strike the shit out of people I love these kind of conversations so if anyone has any opinions on my ideas or if anyone has their own ideas that they would like to share I would love to read them okay final thoughts just some quick notes I guess uh, so Travis he 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 works well with he works very well with characters who are good at initiating follow-up attacks like characters with act twice that being Anna, Trish, Benedict, or characters who can play alongside him sort of in that kind of front lines or flanking kind of positions um, that are good with follow-up attacks like Hosabara or Groma or Saranoa and as I said before ranged physical attacks like archers um, and spear units allow Travis to follow-up attack while keeping his on your guard passive damage reduction which is very useful Cordelia's uh, regen ability is incredibly good on him as he can have a tendency for straying away from the main group 
Uh, Cordelia's regenerability is incredibly good on any kind of bruiser and tank, to be honest. Anyone who's in the front lines taking hits, but definitely works very well with Travis, as well as the Red Scarf can be very good on Travis because he does deal good damage. He will be getting kills. He will be requiring that healing, so that works very well on him as well. I normally didn't find the delay attack on Serenoa to be an overly strong tool compared to other debuffing effects in the game, but once I got my hands on Travis and I could tag two to three enemies consistently while doing decent damage and with back attacks and the follow-up attacks, I really found the potential in this ability and this ability is very strong. Definitely my preferred delay ability in the game. As I've kind of implied before, I do think that the execution, the the concept of this character is great. The execution of the concept of the character is a bit below standard for most of the units in this game. I feel like he does fall a little short in terms of what his potential could be. Uh, this is very unfortunate because they, they had some really cool theming and ideas for this character just a little bit undercooked i'd love to hear some opinions on this video i've honestly really enjoyed covering a character that i thought was missing a few things from his kit and trying to think about fun things to add to his kit i would love to hear some recommendations of other characters that feel a little bit underdeveloped and to kind of brainstorm some ideas of what would look good on them um, but I'm still thinking of doing a video on Flanagan or maybe Groma, but now I'm also thinking about characters that, yeah, seem a bit underdeveloped because those are kind of very fun trying to come up with ideas for them.